The Challenge of the Yukon. Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The snow had a thin crust of ice on it, creating a glare that caused the man holding the rifle to squint as Sergeant Preston, the red-coated mounted policeman, came into his sights. Take a look out there, Rance. Yeah? What is it? Trail wasn't as cold as we thought, huh? I'll drop him in his tracks, boss. No, no, no. Wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? He's heading for the cabin, ain't he? Yeah, but why wait till he gets to the cabin? I had an idea that snowfall would throw him off our trail. <laughs> Nothing but a bullet will ever throw Preston off any trail. You know that, boss. Come on, let me throw no, it I said. If we kill a Marty, the whole force will be after us. Now, did I hear you right, Ramp? You've been cussing that Marty out for the past two weeks. And now that you got a chance to blow his brains out, you're throwing it away. We're going to wait. We know he's here, but he don't know we are yet. <laughs> we'll wait and let him do the worrying. That Mountie don't know it, but no matter what he does, he can't win. <laughs> hey, he's just going into McGregor's cabin. Get ready to travel. Meantime, Sergeant Preston entered McGregor's cabin, unaware at the moment that his movements were being closely watched. After greeting the old man, the Mountie asked if he had seen Rance Taggart, whom the Mountie was hunting. You're asking me, Sergeant Preston, if I've seen Taggart. Nay, I haven't. I haven't seen him, but I've heard from him. You've heard from him? Aye. This I found nailed to the door with a hunting knife this morning. Oh, oh, here, here, man. Read it. It speaks for itself, as you'll see. Hmm. An hour they gave me to come out with my hands up. So Tiger is camped near the timber, eh? Aye, that's what the note says. He knows I couldn't escape with this rheumatism. Mac, is this figure right? Are you holding this much cash in trust for Julie? Aye, it is right. If I'd kept my mouth shut, none would know of it. But I had to tell people I thought that husband of hers wouldn't be able to care for her proper. And that you were holding the money for her. Aye, but just the two of us, Julie and me, know where it is. I didn't let her tell even her husband. The cash isn't in a bank? No, I never trusted them. Oh, Mac. Ah, It's a no bank, I'll tell you. Uh, Oh, these joints are mine. When age catches up with a man bringing rheumatism or or whatever it is... Mac, the men that wrote this note mean business. I know, I know, it's serious. But now that you're here, I I feel better, much better. I've been trailing Rance Taggart and his three pals for nearly a week. Well, you're close enough to them now. It's my money they want to finance their getaway, I take it. Just a minute. Uh, Can you see them through the window? Two of Taggart's men have just started down the trail. Oh, Oh, uh, which way are they going? North. North. That means Dover City. They're going for Julie. They'll make my girl tell them where the cash is. Oh, oh, and me helpless as the day I was born. If I go after them, there are two more waiting in the timber. As soon as I leave, they'll be in here. And yet if I follow those two, Tiger will be in the cabin five minutes after I leave. If I stay... If you stay, man, they likely make a prisoner or worse of my Julie. Whether I go or stay, Tiger will get what he's after. Ah, oh, tis a bloody scheme. If I just had to use them my legs, I could fight the two that are here, and you could take the others. But being crippled up like this, even my fingers, I can't even hold a gun. I 
I got to the smart one. That's why he's been able to evade the law all this time, Mac. But there must be some way. There must be something. Uh, I mean. Whatever it is, it's nothing to can of you or me, Sergeant. Oh, Julie, Julie, my poor last. Tis myself I have to blame for this. If I leave King with you, I know he'll put up a fight, but against two men with guns, I'm I'd... all crippled up and not much use to anybody. Now you go on, after the two of them that left. And leave you to Taggart? He's no novice at murder, Mac. A, a dead man cannot speak, Sergeant. And though he kills me, he'll not learn from me where to find the money. Go now and then concern yourself. And take King with you. You may have need of his help. If there were some way we could outwit them. When they know there are but two of us in the cabin... And it'd have to be something else. No man can be two places at once, Sergeant. I... I know it's hard for you to... to see where your duty is. But I didn't ask you to make the decision. Go. Overtake and capture Tiger's man before they torture Julie. Mac, if for some reason they'd be afraid to harm you. Afraid? Yes, afraid. Afraid that... Mac, listen to me. I'll start on the trail immediately, but before I leave, I want you to know exactly what to do. Have you lost your senses, man? What is it you plan to do? I'll leave King with you, and if I've judged Tiger correctly, there'll be no gunfire. Is it a chance you've taken? It's a chance, but it may work. Sergeant Preston talked fast, then left the McGregor camp. He was barely out of sight on the narrow ribbon of trail when Ramp Taggart and Speed Oliver emerged from the timber. I'd still like to get a shot at him, boss. You just let him walk out of there, and he'll nail the two of them as sure as I'm talking to you. All I want to do is get out of this country. We can't shoot a Mountie and get away with it. Yeah, but he'll get Red and Pete. Let him get them. If I can stall him off, we put our hands on McGregor's cash. All that's between you and me and the next boat out of Juneau... It's a couple of hundred miles. But Red and Pete won't stand it. If he catches it. up with them, that's their tough luck. Not mine or yours. Oh. <laughs> I see. And we'll have that cash inside of ten minutes. If the old man talks. <laughs> He'll talk, all right. You got your gun ready? Yeah. If the dog makes trouble, shoot. Yeah. Come on, then. Arnold and Pete Ordway had a head start on the Mountie, and in spite of the fact that Preston traveled rapidly, they reached Dover City before him. Arriving there, they went immediately to the home of Tom McGregor's daughter, Julie. All we want to know is where your father's holding that cash for you. Cash? The cash he'd never put in any bank. Is it here or out of his place? Well, if you've come here just to ask me that, you're wasting your time. No. No, we didn't come here to let it go and ask him. You aren't frightening me. Maybe it would frighten you if something were to happen to your husband. My husband? You, you wouldn't dare. All we have to do is wait for him. No, no, I won't let you. You won't do nothing. Pete, take that shirt she was mended. Tear it into strips and tie her hands and feet. Sure, Ed. You'll never get away with this. I'll... Grab her, Pete. Let me alone. You're hurting me. Stop. Hold it, you. Hey, Preston. This is for you. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I, I... I'm not waiting for anything. Oh, oh. You've got it, Marty. But you won't be able to save McGregor. My father? What do you mean? It's something happened to him? Preston knows what we mean. I'm going to leave you two in custody in Dover City. You needn't worry about your father, Mrs. Barlow. I'm sure he'll be all right. Retracing his steps after leaving two sullen prisoners in Dover City, Sergeant Preston covered ground rapidly. Soon, he was back in Tom McGregor's cabin. <laughs> I'm mighty relieved, mighty relieved to hear that news, Sergeant. <laughs> uh, you should have seen the eyes of them two cutthroats when they walked in here. Taggart wasted no time in getting away. I have to hand it to you. That was a fine idea, man, a fine idea. Well, now that you're safe... 
King and I have a job to finish. Uh, You'll be taken to the trail again? I'll be on the trail until Taggart and his pal are behind bars. Their tracks should be fresh in the snow. Aye. And King here will remember them well. Goodbye, Sergeant. Thank you, Ed. And good luck. Again on the trail with the great Malamute King running ahead of him, Sergeant Preston followed the tracks cut in the snow by Rance Taggart and Speed Oliver. Relentlessly traveling at their fast pace, man and dog were tracking down their men. Taggart and Oliver had quite a head start on Mountie. Nevertheless, Preston pushed on, mile after mile, driving his dog team onward at a fast and steady pace. Time and again, he thought he had lost the trail, but King's instinct never failed him, and the great Malamute raced before the pack, leading the Mountie ever closer to the fleeing Taggart and Oliver. A short time later, far ahead on the trail, the Mountie saw the men he was after. And as the distance between them shrunk with every step, Preston called. All right, King. Stop them, fella. Speed! My dog! My Preston! Get my gun! Oh, 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 oh. Rant! He's not me now. Get him away from me! Oh, you, you, get him between you. the eyes! Call that gun, Taggart. You're covered. Call this dog off, Mountie. Call him off! Good work, King. Down, boy. Down. Pull that dog back. Keep him where he is, Mally. Make him stay away from us. Oh, don't let him get any closer. He won't hurt you unless you try to make a getaway. Oh, well, order him to stay back. We, we ain't going to try anything. We'll go with you, Preston. Oh. You'll see that he don't get near us. Keep a distance between us. We'll go to jail without making any trouble. That's right. I'd sooner go straight to jail and come down with the ailment McGregor's got. That dog of yours was with the old man. You can't catch rheumatism uh, through my dog. Who said anything about rheumatics? McGregor's got smallpox. His face was all broke out in smallpox. We've seen him. When you saw him, he was putting on an act to make you two keep your distance while I went after your pals. What? What the? What you saw was berry stain on his face. He washed it off five minutes after you left. You mean to say it was a trick? Well, call it whatever you like. Nevertheless, your fear of the smallpox saved McGregor's cash and his life. Now get moving. Both of you. Yes, fella. The case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time.